Hey Bayside students, welcome back to the fourth week in our midweek live. We're in a series right now called More Than a Building. If you are new, we want to get to know you. Make sure that you subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you don't miss anything that we're putting out. Also, if you love it here, make sure that you like this video and share with your friends so that they can see what you are enjoying every single Wednesday. Hey, there's a bunch of people in the chat, so why don't you type in just in emojis what has your quarantine been like just in emojis and you can see how your friends are doing right now we like to say that we love a little bit of head heart and humor so we've got something fun coming up a little game a little game show to to get you guys started and right after that we're gonna head into the fourth in our new series more than a building so make sure you grab a snack whether it's some popcorn, some Swedish fish, sit back in that couch, relax and enjoy our fourth week in More Than a Building. What is up, people? Welcome to Let's Go, the game show. I'm Hannah, your host, and with me we have two amazing contestants today. Make some noise for Jarvis. And make some noise for Marcus. Guys, these are two awesome people on our student staff. Today we're going to play a game called Show and Tell Speed Edition. Here's how this is going to work. I'm going to ask you to grab or bring an item to the screen from your house. First person to bring it win. People in the chat, please tell us who you think is going to win today. Round one. Be the first person to grab an item from your junk drawer and bring it to the screen. Go. <laughs> Who got it? Who do you think is going to take the win right now? I want to know what is in your junk drawer at your house. What do you find there? What do you like to put in? Oh, 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 Marcus, what what do you have? Um, it's a beat up uh, old uh, tag of from. You don't even know what it is. Jarvis, what do you have? Char Baby, in your junk drawer? Okay. Junk drawer. Here we oh stop! Yeah, bro. I said junk for the for the record. We have a winner for this round is Marcus. Moving on to round two, we need the first person to bring us your least favorite pair of shoes. Go! Do you have a favorite pair of shoes, students? I really think everybody's got a least favorite pair of shoes. It's like the one that you put in a box that you don't like. Oh, Marcus! Come oh. in clutch. Come on. Okay. Okay. Jarvis, where are you at? Yeah, Jarvis MIA in the house. Oh, but wow, yeah, those are amazing. Yeah, throw those away. Okay, Bronx, we bro. have a winner for that round. Marcus again has two. Jarvis is zero. Moving on to round three. First person to grab and eat something, anything from your pantry. Go. <laughs> what is in your pantry? This is what I want to know, and I want to know who you think is going to take you with right now. Jarvis, come on. Come on, Jarvis, we're gonna help you out. Marcus, what? Jarvis, you were way too slow. Bye. Three to zero. Come on, Jarvis. We're gonna heat. Here we go. Round four. Show us. Take the camera. Show us. First person to show us how much toilet paper you have. On your heart. Where are you going? Who do you think? How much money? Target tags. Um. Oh. Marcus. Again. Playing game. Target. We are royally disappointed in your efforts. That toilet paper. You can. Okay. He takes the win. That round, guys. Final round right here. They're gonna set their phones down. I know y'all are doing the walk. We need to walk faster. Come on, here we go, here we go, here we go. Prop that phone down, final round. Grab and show us a baby. On your mark, get set, go! Marcus, where's your baby? Do you, do you? He's actually asleep right now. He's on a sleep schedule, so poor man is knocked out. Oh yeah, you don't go in there. You don't wake him up. Sorry, that means, that means we're about to see, maybe. I don't know. I don't see him. I don't see anything. Here we go, guys. Do you think Chance is gonna make a showing 
for today's game show. Oh, oh, we have a oh, baby. It's <laughs> <laughs> um, sleeping. Jarvis, what is his name? Her name is Coco. Chance is sleeping. His mom not having the disturbance, so. I know, same here, bro. <laughs> hey, well, we have a clear winner. Four to one. Everyone make some noise. Shoot some emojis for the one and only Marcus. Oh, hey. Let's go, let's go. Mid-time. Everybody, thanks for joining us for Let's Go to the Game Show. We'll see you next week. Bye. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Jacob, uh, one of your student pastors at the Blue Oaks campus, and uh, we are continuing in our series of More Than a Building, or and um, we're super excited about it. Last week, you saw Cameron and Mary Jane, uh, and they were teaching out of the Book of Acts, and we we're going to continue right in that, and so let's get to it. Um, but crazy times right now with the virus going on, and we're not meeting, it's so much different, but I feel like there's such an amazing opportunity right here, right now, for God to do something incredible in your life. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit. And uh, I wanna talk about the idea of forced scattering. But before we get there, uh, I wanna tell you about something that I admire so much. Uh, when I was coming out of high school, I had so many friends that wanted to go into the Navy. And so I asked them a little bit about why that was so important to them, what they were excited about. And they said, just every single time, I wanna be a Navy SEAL. I want to be a Navy SEAL. I wanna be the guy that is the most manly that'll come in when anything is needed, when anything needs saving, when anything needs to be dealt with. I wanna be that person. And uh, I was looking at some of the things that Navy SEALs go through in order to get to the rank of Navy SEAL. And it's crazy stuff. Hours of swimming out in open ocean, uh, being tied up doing drowning training, all of these insane things. But the last thing that they do before they become a Navy SEAL is go through Hell Week. Hell Week is just that, the worst thing you could ever experience, but there's something about this hell week through all of the trials, through carrying logs over their heads, running and trudging together, doing crazy stuff like getting through tear gas chambers. It, on the other end, makes them one of the toughest, most equipped warriors to go out and do the business of the United States. And I feel like that is what we are in right now. I don't know if it's hell week, but it's really crazy and it's something super uncomfortable. So I want to take you into Acts and to show you what the early church, the first people that started this whole thing, how they responded to times of craziness, uh, which may just be the hell week. So we're gonna jump into Acts. And uh, before we get there in Acts 8, uh, there's a character introduced, and his name is Saul. Yes, you know exactly who I'm talking about. The person that f later changes into the guy, Paul, who wrote almost the entirety of the New Testament. He is uh, now in a situation where he is about to have his life rocked. But right before that happens, he is probably the sole reason why Christians were so scared and fearful because of what he was doing to them. And we cut to the passage in Acts 8. It says, and Saul approved for their killing him on, on that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church going from house to house. He dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. Those who had been scattered, scattered, preached the word wherever they went. For some reason, uh, one of God's things that he uses to grow the church and to grow you into the person that he wants you to be and the warrior that he needs is through putting you in difficult situations. Right here, the people in Acts were being persecuted. They were being killed and solely from this person named Paul. And as you saw in there, there was a man named Stephen who was actually stoned to death for just believing in Jesus Christ. And it was crazy times. And I feel like right now we are also in those crazy times. Like, do I have enough toilet paper? What is it gonna look like for the next couple weeks? Am I just gonna be sitting in my house watching TV doing nothing? Am I gonna be like not able to catch up on school? Like what is the deal? What is happening? But I feel like God is trying to use this situation 
to grow you and to move you to action for something really, really powerful. There's three ways that we can respond to this and to change our perspective from this is scary, I don't know what to do, to this is the time God is trying to grow me and to push me into something really, really important. And so the first point is this, know that what Satan means for opposition, God means for opportunity. For some reason, all of these things that are happening, God this is one of the sole ways that he wants to develop you and to change you. And what really seems like the devil's schemes and what he's trying to do to mess everybody up and freak everybody out is a thing that God is using to do a great, um, just amazing work. And so uh, back to the passage, it says, Saul approved of their killing of him. And, and on that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem. These guys were feeling it, and I also believe that they were feeling all of the questions that you and I say to ourselves every day. What do I do with this? Am I good enough? This is annoying. This sucks. How do I get through this? And, um, and God is most honored with us when we are most dependent on him. Here's the reality. You don't have to have it figured out, but he already does. And Jesus said on the cross right before he died, it is finished. Are we living like it's already done, like he's already taken care of it? And the end of this story is already written. And so point two, our placement is God's purpose. It says that as a result of this entire situation going on, uh, everyone was scattered around. And it says in the verse right here, here it comes. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. They scattered everywhere. What seemed like the worst situation in the world actually caused the most effective revival and spreading of the gospel ever. This is what we have the opportunity to do right here, right now. Maybe it doesn't look like what you thought it was going to look like, but maybe you can lift your perspective a little bit to see how God sees this situation where, man, we don't get to go to church. We get to be planted in homes, getting people that might never even step into a church context to find out the love of Jesus. Man, this is such a big opportunity. Don't miss it. Don't be on the sidelines. Get in the game. And lastly, preach where you're planted. Preach where you're planted. It doesn't seem like there's a huge opportunity to do that in your living room, but I promise wherever you are, there is an opportunity to make Jesus known. And it might not even be with your words. It might be with your actions. In a world right now that is fearful, that's scared, that doesn't know how to operate, that has uprooted everything that's comfortable and normal, you can be the one that can shine Jesus' light, shine his love, shine his confidence, walk like the battle is already taken care of, that it's already won and like it is finished. Preach where you're planted, wherever that is. Bring people into your circles, love them, hang out. Create this as an opportunity to just be the church. Man, we're so, we're so excited for the rest of this series, and I'm so excited to see what God is doing in this next season. It might not look like what you thought it was going to look like, but it is such an opportunity. And so right now, uh, I'm going to welcome up one of my friends. He's incredible, but he wants to give you a few action points to show us what to do with this. Would you welcome up Tyler Sweeney? Oh man, such a good teaching by Jacob. And we just want to say that we got a couple of reflection questions we want you guys to go through. And the first one is this, you're going to see it up on the screen. When was a time you struggled to have an optimistic attitude about a circumstance? Maybe it was when you were a kid and you didn't get the toy in the McDonald's Happy Meal that you were hoping you were going to get. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I've been there. For me, it was senior year of high school. I played football and sports all growing up. And I remember my senior year of football, we get to the Monday going into the week of playoffs and we find out at lunchtime that our team got kicked out of CIF because of a violation we overlooked six months earlier. And now our entire team had to suffer. Man, that took a long time for me to get over. And we've all been there, right? There are circumstances that don't go our way and we have to trudge forward. But the good news is you don't do it alone. You get to do it together with your church family. But think about what that is for you. Number two, number two, who is someone God wants to, to use you 
to impact right now. I'll just be real candid with you guys. Uh, God has been putting my neighbors across the street on my heart because he's been asking me the question, hey Ty, if you can't love those that you live 20 feet across from, who can you love in your life? And I just want you to think about that. Who is it that God's asking you to love and impact right now? He's gonna put someone on your heart. Maybe it's that kid in your class. Well, maybe not right now because you're not in school, but you're gonna get back into school. You have those friends that are on your heart. Maybe they're on your team. Maybe they're in your play, whatever it is, whoever it is, think about that person. And the last question, number three, what keeps you from sharing Jesus with others? Is it fear? Is it worry about what they're going to think, what they're going to say when you're not in front of them anymore, behind your back? Is it something that's getting inside of you that's growing and you can't get over because you're more concerned about what they think about you than what God thinks about you. Here's the deal. God's going to open up some really cool doors of opportunity for you. And if you will trust him, he will absolutely blow your mind. Hey, we're with you in this season. We hope that you like today's message. We want you guys to wrap up thinking about these questions, talking through these questions. And remember, in the chaos, we are more than a building. We'll see you back here next week. Same time, same place. Have a good one. Thanks again for hanging out with us Bayside students at Midweek Live. If you want to stay connected with us midweek, make sure that you follow us on Instagram, bayside.students, and subscribe to this YouTube page that you're watching right now. We're actually going to head to group time. So uh, if you want to get connected, you say, I'm not sure what's going on, there's actually going to be a link in the chat that's going to be able to connect you into a group tonight. Also, if you're looking for prayer or just want to be able to talk to a pastor, just fill out the stuff that's inside of that link. We want to connect with you. So thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Make sure that you come back next week. We've got something really special. We have a worship night next week. We're mixing it up. So join us for our fifth week of More Than a Building next week. Angels are falling from grace God made the earth for the man Look how he turned from his face But he chased with his grace Now there is a war in the heavens Demons they talk on my soul from the darkness I know God's calling you all to dwell with Him yeah. And they try to make sure you don't Let me know, choose your own I see wicked spirits in heavenly places I see wicked spirits in heavenly places